Hello and welcome. Now today's bonus midweek video is going to be about the Atari. Now specifically about the Atari 2600. Though not so much in this form, despite really liking this form. The original Woody. Nothing can beat it. Though I'd prefer to have a heavy sixer rather than a light sixer, but I'm not complaining. It's a Woody. Now specifically I wish to talk about the Atari Blaze itself. Blaze came out with the Atari Retro Handle console and initially when I saw it I was just like oh that looks good and you know I'm not so much into the minis and I'll give you the reason for that a little later on I, it's a it's an, a woody handheld <laughs> that's what, I mean come on you know what's there not to like yeah, initially I saw that, okay, it's got 50 games, no way of putting, no way of officially putting more games on. So I thought, mm, I'm not sure about this, you know. So I kind of left it. I would have got it and I would have reviewed it way back when it came, because I was excited and almost went for it. But I just thought, mm, I don't know. This. I'll tell you why a little later on, <laughs> once I'm exploring this. But recently I got a little weak on the knees when I saw this one. This is the 60 game edition with the SD card inside. And I saw it and I just gave into it. I was just like, okay, that, that seals the deal for me. I mean, it was a touch more expensive. Now let's see if the actual, you know, I've got it here. Let's test it and see if it actually does take all the boxes you know, on the inside for us. After all, we cannot just go for looks. We have to go for a substance too. Do check out PCBWay. They do high quality custom PCBs, single and double sided, as well as both surface mounted and through hull assembly. I'm actually thinking about getting our Sidbox 5 assembled with them once we've finished our PCB design, as well as some of my future projects. They have a very fast delivery service, so you will get your PCB delivered to you in no time. Now I have to say one thing that struck out to me when, when I saw this, when this arrived, was the the actual artwork on the packaging. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those that makes you want to keep the box. <laughs> anyway, let's open this up and explore it. Ah, one thing I've noticed is that the packaging, as nice as it is on the outside, on the inside it's not as nice as the 50 game version. I've seen the packaging on the 50 game version and it's got this nice foamy black foam thing happening for it. And unfortunately, this is just like this cheap, you know, vacuum formed plastic thing. And yeah, I wish this had a bit of a, it'd be good because I do intend to keep putting it back in its, in its box. So it'd be, it'd be nice to have a good box for it. That's a shame. Nonetheless, if you know retro systems, if you know handhelds, I mean, it's a no brainer, but stuff like you know, it says you have to hold the two, come out the game and reset the console. You have to hold start and select at the same time simultaneously. You know, and I'll just do it. Now then, first of all, I want to take this, this front bit off, the screen protector. There we go. Revealing a very nice screen, which I've just put <laughs> my fingerprints on. <laughs> Uh, the the 60 game version 33 pounds on Amazon around about 33 pounds, um, and the 50 game version is around 26. So there is you know significant more for 10 extra games, and also the SD card slot, which is you know for homebrew. But of course you know you can put your backups on there and you know so forth. Now I know I've talked about the package a lot and everything, but, I have to, but so it matters. It really does actually matter, especially when you're gonna go out and buy something that makes you feel good. Now this feels like I've bought a computer system or something like that, you know, back in the, the 90s, you know, and I've just opened it out and I'm just exploring it. And the fact that it's got, I mean, little details, like that it's got an old school style red LED on it, that does it for me. That really does it for me. <laughs> on off switch here, you've got the headphone socket there. Now you've got the AV out here, which you can connect to your your TV or whatever. It's I think that's going to be composite, so you know I don't. It doesn't come with a lead, unfortunately. It should do, but it doesn't. Uh, there's a volume control here, very nice and simple, very Walkman style, Walkman-esque. It's got the look at that. It's very nice. I mean, it's of course it's not going to be real wood. It's plastic, but it, 
good, good job of looking like wood. But then again, saying that, the original 2600 here. Original 2600 is not actually wood. It's the same thing. It's just plastic that looks like wood. You know. I don't know about the heavy sixer. Heavy sixer should be freaking wood. The mod is cost now. It should be wood. <laughs> it has the battery compartment. It takes four triple A's. The spirit of the 90s here. <laughs> I like that. Four triple A's. Everything these days has got like built-in rechargeable batteries and stuff. But I like that touch. Overall it feels... I mean there's your SD card slot here at the side. Overall it feels really good. I mean it doesn't feel... For the price I was expecting it to feel really like bad cheap. But it actually doesn't feel too much different to the original. And I also like the fact that the controller here, the way it's designed, it's very comfortable feeling. Uh, I like the, the nice late 70s, 80s retro orange kind of look. I'm digging that. And also the fact that, you know, it's got the original Atari joystick. The spirit of the Atari joystick, you can see it. The details there around the pad here. Uh, it's got those, those rubber rubber rings are just like it has here. Now this, I have to say, is very comfortable to use. It just feels very nice. You know, you kind of like, you have the two buttons. I have no idea why there's two buttons. Usually there's just one. That's all I've ever known Atari 2600 of is one. But, you know, we'll go through that later on. My freaking fingerprints there bugging me. <laughs> one touch and that's it. It's done. <laughs> I have to say, this feels good. But this, apologize in advance, Atari and Atari fans and hardcore Atari fans who love this joystick but it just no I don't like it I'm sorry now this freaking stick is like are these bite marks you can see freaking bite marks and like proper ones I mean I don't know what the previous owner has been doing trust me there's not me who's been biting this stick but the, the actual shape of this is like hexagonal and it's like when you play I, I did at first the first time I got this I was playing this and it was so uncomfortable it was just really bad and it hurt my hand here you know from like pressing against this freaking hexagonal feeling thing it's just uncomfortable and I think the person who freaking bit this and chewed on this must have felt the same frustration <laughs> anyway the look of it is nice, I'll give it that. The look of it is nice and I like the fact that the Blaze has, you know, the same... followed the same design thing. I really like that, actually. Now, while I put the batteries in, I'm actually going to show you, you know, the, the box where it says what... where it lists the games. Now, you can see the list of games here, including the Atari 7800 games there. And the good thing about this is that it not only plays Atari 7800 games, it also plays the Supercharger games. If you don't know about the Supercharger, it's uh, a little add-on. There's only got like a handful of games for it. Um, it I like the concept. Uh, it was a cartridge to connect a cassette player to. So you could load tape games on Atari, you know, and they were a little bit more advanced. But, you know, it's a shame that it didn't take off, but it did come with a few games, I mean a handful of games, and you know, you can, if you get the the ROMs, you can play them. I should say the, yeah, the ROM files, you can play, play them on this. This will accept them straight away. So, now we have that in. I got an SD card earlier on. Micro SD card, FART32. I put some games on it before. And you just, okay. Turn it on a nice old-fashioned way. Ooh, <laughs> old school LED. I like it. This is here, the Atari logo. And here you have your games. Uh, these are not the SD card games, these are the games that are built in. So you got screens 1 to 13. Anyway, let's go inside what I have here. Got some 7800 games. Um, I have these stupid extra dot ones. That's the problem with OS. OS X, sorry. Um, it puts these extra stupid files, which I'm gonna, I need to get rid of. Now this is the Pac-Man edition. Now the other one doesn't even have Pac-Man. This one's got Pac-Man. So let's let's have a game of Pac-Man, as horrible as it is. <laughs> let's start. Oh, the sound is a bit choppy there. 
Let's see. We notice some of the ghosts keep disappearing. Oh, that sound is actually a... not so great. Oh, goodness sake. Hold on. Let me just go back to this and play another game. What's wrong with the, um, the sound? Let's play Yara's Orange. It's one of my favorites. One thing I have to say, it is comfortable to play on it. Is it, are these two buttons just exactly the same or something? Because they're behaving exactly the same. Got him! <laughs> okay, I mean, that was a comfortable gameplay. I have to say. And the sound, well, it's what you'd expect from, you know, 2600. Uh, let's go to Asteroids. God, I just how that retro that looks. <laughs> I like this. Actually. The sound is not, ni not right, is it? These buttons are identical. Oh, darn it. And there's, there's a delay in the sound, in the audio as well. I mean, it doesn't take much to emulate the 2600. Come on. Now, one thing I'm actually curious about, and that is paddle games, like Circus Adari. And how they... Ooh. Okay, and how they are. Let's start that. So, like, there's no difficulty switch I've noticed on this. Of course. Don't know why. Because normally it is there. I'm just looking at it there. On the actual 2600, there's no difficulty switch. Okay, let's see what this is like. Oh, that sound and that delay. I'm sorry, but I can really notice it. Oh, fuck. Okay, the paddles, to be honest, it's it's not the same as playing with it on paddles. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's very j jagged movement, if you know what I mean. So with paddles, you've got more control. I mean, you could do that, but there's not as much control of it as... Let's try it. No, it's not... <laughs> it's not so great, I'm sorry. They could have put like another analog control, like like you see the the volume here, the volume wheel. They could have put a potentiometer here, and you know, all it is is one variable resistor. You know, it's not going to cost that much extra, and they could have just had it so like this little wheel here that you you know back and forth, which controls the paddles. It really wouldn't have made that much of a big deal, you know, just a little addition, and it's possible. You can do that, you can put analog controls on these things. So I'm really not sure why they didn't do that, especially you know, since some of the games like this are much better with paddles. Actually saying that, talk about paddle games, let's try a supercharger game from the SD card. It's called Fireball here. Oh, that sound! <laughs> I've played this and it's much better than this. I'll show, I'll show you the comparison. Okay, so we have this. You cannot actually move the person. So, if you actually have a paddle game that you backed up, you actually cannot play it because there's no paddles. It needs a paddle. You see what I'm... Let me give you a comparison. Now, if you play it on this. Now, of course, by no means is this a system comparison between the PS Vita and this. I know that this is in a league of its own. So I'm not comparing the systems, I'm actually comparing the emulation. Because I know that this Atari 2600 can be em emulated on whatever this is inside, which we are going to go into. I'm pretty sure that 2600 can be emulated on this much better than it is now. I think it's just the way it's been programmed or it's just needs some adjustments. 
you know, so forth. So I want to compare the experience here. Okay, so we have PSP 2600. Look for this very same game, Fireball. See what I mean? Sound is emulated better. See this? See what I mean? The analog stick on this. The analog stick on this is actually emulating the paddle. And look at the difference in the sound. Darn it! I did bad. <laughs> the hook took me away. You see what I mean? Let's let's go for another one here. Okay, now you see one of the Have you noticed something? Let's turn that down. The the flashing of the ghosts. Now what they've used is you know multiplexing on the ghosts sprites. So it's kind of like okay, let's stop you now. They've used basically multiplexing on the ghosts. So the ghosts the ghosts the reason why they flicker is because they're alternating sprites with the other one. As far as my understanding is, and of course you can have more sprites if you do that. You can have double the amount of sprites because they're alternating, but they have to have that flickering. So there's a reason for that flickering. Now, this one, one thing I've noticed about this is that it doesn't flicker well, and the reason for that is, if this is flickering at 50 hertz, you know the ghosts are flickering at 50 hertz. Uh, or 60 hertz, depending on your region. Um, then, of course, the I think it's the frame rate of the LCD, the display itself here, which determines, you know, of course, it's kind of like um, similar to, do you know when you're trying to film a CRT, and the CRT is PAL, let's call it PAL, 50 hertz, and you have to set your um, shutter speed 1 50th of a second for it to not flicker. It's kind of like that. If you set it to 60, it'll flicker or it'll... And whatever flickers on the screen will be irregular. So that is what's happening here with this. The frame rate of the LCD itself is different from the system. The, the Atari system being emulated. So that's what's happening there. Oh for goodness sake. Now can you see there? One of the ghosts almost appears... They almost appear invisible. See that one? It just disappears for a good period of time where you will have no idea it's there and just get surprised by it. Does this thing have River Raid? It doesn't have it built in. Did I put it on the SD card? I can't even remember. <laughs> oh yeah, I did put... I gotta get River Raid. Okay. Let's check out River Raid here. Right? It's not so bad, actually. Actually, that's quite playable. I like that. So, depending on the game... Depending on the game, it's actually quite good. Some of them are alright. It's a bit delayed, of course, This the audio. Oh, fuck, I keep blowing up the darn fuels. And it's emulated, oh for goodness sake, stupid little nodule. It's emulated, I'm not concentrating because I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, the em it's emulated much better as well. Oh, go away. It's like the sound is much refined. I'm not sure if the other one needs a buffer or what, but the sound sounds a bit... Stupid thing. Ah! Yay, got him. It's, to be honest, it's not bad to hold. It's a bit comfortable. I can feel this ridge here. After, after like, you know, a few hours of playing, that could get, you know, depending on how you hold it. I, I got a habit of holding them like this. So, I can feel the ridge on my fingers there. I know after, like, 
a lot of hardcore playing you could do that but you could just easily i mean it's maybe it's just that's just my habit if i just do this then it'd be much better robots run let's start that up 7800 game Okay. <laughs> ah. Not bad. It's definitely playable. Ooh. Ah. But you know what I've noticed? It emulates the 7800 really fast. You notice that? Everything feels a bit too fast. You know what I mean? Ooh. Okay, so I don't have Robotron on there. It just won't come up in the thing yet. I think I need to download a dedicated 7800 system. Uh, I do have RetroArch there, but for some reason it just comes up with some stupid error when I'm you know, trying to run it. So I need to reinstall that. Uh, because it wasn't, it was just all of a sudden it just happened when I tried, you know, running something. Anyway, that's, that's fine. Uh, I think I've made the points on these, what I want to do. Certain games are good on this. Other games are a bit... Mm, um, let's run Dig Dug, actually. Which doesn't work, it just, it's just like... Bleh. Let's see, does, it, does this have Dig Dug in? Should do if it doesn't. Dodge him. Dodge him's a hard game! <laughs> I have to say, the, the viewing angle is a bit funny on this. So if you just turn it just slightly this way, you go thingy. But up and down, it's not so bad. Up and down. And to be honest, no one plays like this, so I mean, it's fine. Uh, unless you're playing next to somebody and they want to watch you. You know, there's. It's not so bad. Actually, it's, it's not so bad. It's a bit. Yeah, it's not best, but it's fine. It's just a delay. Delay in sound can be a bit off putting. Ah! Okay, that was close. Ah! Darn it! I've never beaten not even a single level on this thing. Could this possibly be my first time? Oh my goodness! The first time I've ever beat the first level on this. <laughs> well, that goes straight. It must be something it's doing right then if I can do that. Do I have dodge him? I do not have dodge him, but I have dig dug. Okay. So we came out on this. Ooh, it works on this, but it doesn't work on here. Okay, interesting. I find this cute. In the sense of the way the music is, and the way it's, <laughs> the way he's walking. Every time he walks, the music happens. Like his footsteps look cute with the music. I like Dig Dug for the 2600. Ah! Trying to escape. Yeah, it doesn't like it, does it? So I'm liking Dig Dug. It's the same ROM, by the way. They're the same ROM file. Maybe I could get another one. Another backup. Already on this game. <laughs> Take this out and add. Ah! Where the freak did that go? <laughs> My memory card's been flung across the freaking across the room. Where did it go? <laughs> okay, I found it. Literally, it was just like a, all the way across the room. Okay, that's not good. Be careful. <laughs> when you're taking it out, make sure you put your hand over it or something. <laughs> it's just like. Bleh. Nearly freaking flung into my eye or something. <laughs> okay, put it in. Uh, this time I got it from another site which had an A26 file instead of a bin file. Let's see if this works. Not that this doesn't accept bin files, it does, as you've seen already. No, it doesn't like Dig Dug. So there's two different sources. It does not like Dig Dug. That's not good. I like Dig Dug. I want to play Dig Dug. What do I do? Oh, do you know what's happening here? 
It's doing the multiplexing flickering thing. Do you know the multiplexing that the, I told you about the flickering? Some of the things that they're throwing down at you are invisible. I mean, most things are playable. I'll give it that. I'm really impressed with it. I like what it is. Let's look inside it now because I'm very curious on what it is exactly that's emulating this. And it cannot be that bad because I'm pretty sure a freaking Pi Zero. I'm not saying that this contains a Pi Zero. I'm saying that Raspberry Pi Zero can freaking emulate this much smoother than this. Um, and that's getting to me now. Just like, why? So let's kind of like take the batteries out. And give it a bit of a spank. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, let's um, open this up now. <laughs> and you know me, I've always been the the one that kind of like opens something up to check what's inside it. I've always been like that since childhood. Like half my toys, I broke this way, which makes me sad actually because I've missed them toys. <laughs> okay, I need to take the memory card out. Slowly this time, because that's what was yeah, that was what was stopping it from opening. Oh, gotta be careful! Don't want to ruin this sticker here. Okay, so what's going on inside here? Oh dear, hold on. easy, easy. Okay, no, this is kind of sophisticated inside here. It's not like nothing small. It's not like cheap or simple or anything. It's F1C100S. Okay, so that's the processor there. Let's see what the rest of the stuff are. Okay, so let's have a look what's inside this chip here. Yeah, inside this, um, what you call it, blaze here. Okay, so this is an F1C100S, uh, all winner tech. Now, this is basically an ARM9 base. The architecture is, I mean, looking it up is, yeah, ARM9 CPU architecture and you know it's nothing small I mean it's got like a DMA it's got a memory subsystem and it's even like you know got its own audio deck in there so this is not like it's not small fry it's not like really new thing uh, actually it's, it reminds me a bit of the STM 32 which we're um, you know creating the new Sidbox 5 out of so yeah I'm not sure what the freak is going on they should be able to no problem they should the 2600 should be flying on here because to be honest this thing is pretty good for what it is I'm not sure what that is that doesn't say anything but since it's near the AV out I mean this is the AV out here I'm figuring that this is gonna be like a composite output or you know, converts to the composite or something this is the audio output so this is gonna be you know ready and there you go that's an LM 4890s which is basically an 1 watt audio power amplifier wind bend Oh, it's been bond. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what that is to be honest. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> this F, this um, it's like an all-in-one chip kind of thing, and it's got yeah, it's got a DAC there, audio DAC. It's got video out, HDMI out, I think, and it's also got um, you know the processor, the memory, and everything. Uh, it's got internal and external memory, so it's you know it supports both. So yeah, I think it's literally it's good hardware. It's just the case of freaking you not know, coding it right. Okay, I'm gonna look up this freaking wind bend. <laughs> okay, so it's a three volt, 128 megabit serial flash memory with dual quad SPI. In other words, I'm feeling it's like a ROM. So that's the speaker there. I'm sure you could like upgrade that if you wanted to, but you know it's it's fine. <laughs> you know you don't need it any louder. It's only um 2600 after all. Uh, this is a thing. Again, I wish they'd put a a paddle system, like a paddle or something. It could be at the bottom. It could have been, as I said, oh darn it, don't want to lose that. It could have been here. It could have been you know anywhere like this. So yeah, to be honest, I really like it. I like this. Of course, um, you know, as I said, I'm not gonna compare it with the PS Vita. You know, you have to go through a lot of fifaf to freaking get it to try 2600 games or anything else. Yeah, sure, it does have a few 
issues here and there with audio and stuff. I don't know, who knows, maybe they'll decide to update it. And then there is like a USB port here, which is, you know, I like it, though I'm, not sh I'm sure most people are not gonna want to, you know, open it up and start trying to update it or whatever. That's the thing you see, the reason why I don't go for minis so much, like the mini consoles, like you get freaking Nintendo minis and Sega minis and all this stuff. The reason why is because I don't like this concept of having, you know, games, like a certain select number of games, like the the other one had 50 games. And then you have, you have no other choice. Uh, yeah, sure, you can open it up like this. You can, you know, hack it or something and then add more games on, of course, you know. There's that option, but what I don't like about them is the fact that to the everyday user, you know, the one who's not like me, freaking opening it out, tinkering and hacking stuff, <laughs> you know, to those people who just want to like plug and play and add more games on or whatever, they're a bit, a bit of a tease and you know, not everyone likes the same games, right? And that's what bugs me about minis. and. Other, otherwise, they're fine. If there was like a mini, minis that support, I mean like these lot have done. One thing I have to commend these these guys for is putting an SD card on there and saying that, okay, that is for homebrew. That is getting into the spirit of things. And if it's for homebrew, you can play your, there's not, it's not illegal to kind of like play your backups that you already own, you know, on cartridges, if that's such a huge issue. So yeah. And whatever else you do is your choice, <laughs> you know? You could put demos on this thing, actually, yeah, that's a good idea. I wanna um, download some uh, 2600 demos and see how they run on this thing. But yeah, that's what bugs me about Mini, and you, you'll not see me buying a Mini or anything like this. Uh, this is literally the only one that I considered. Uh, so somebody who's... <laughs> this is like a review from somebody who's not really into these modern Mini sort of systems. Um, that's why I, I delayed on getting the one with the 50 games. I was thinking, okay, this is really nice, I would like to have it, and I was almost there to put it in my, you know, Amazon basket, but I just thought, no. And I'm glad I did, because later on in the day, I just looked around at it a bit more. It was bugging me, it was playing on my mind, of course. Looked about, looked around at it a bit more, and I came across this one. This Pac-Man edition. If I want to go somewhere now, and I don't want to take my Vita or something, and I want to take this, like somewhere small, you know, I don't want to take my Vita, and I can just like take this, put this in my in my backpack, and then just be like, okay, while well, I'm waiting for somebody or or something like this. Um, so it's, I mean, it's good. You can play stuff on it. So you see what else? Missile Command. My brother loved this game. Missile Command. Actually, I should um, show him. No. Stupid idiots took one out. Oh, does this have Defender? I still don't... I keep forgetting which one. It's got quite 60 games, there's a lot of games. You know. So, I don't remember all of them. <laughs> this is very playable, by the way. I'm enjoying this. Do you know what this reminds me of? It's taking me back. It reminds me of... And this gives me the feeling which, which the Vita doesn't is do you know the small little lcd games that you could get if i got this instead of an lcd game i'd be i'd be oh, back then as in i would have been so happy you know what i mean so with the vita you feel like it's a proper you know system oh no i'm out of thinkies with the vita you feel like it's a proper system yeah and when you hold it in your hand and you play it and it doesn't feel like one of those LCD games. Uh, whereas this does, this has that feeling. And the fact that it has like, you know, the batteries um, and it's old school style with the LED and the power switch and the, and these, and the uh, jack sockets, 3.5 millimeter jack sockets and you know, volume, qu it's just perfect. It feels like I've just bought it in the 90 or something, except for the screen, of course. Uh, obviously it would have been a crude screen. Actually, one of the things I can do here to show you uh, what the headphones sound like is connect this directly to your ears. So what I'll do is I'll just connect the microphone which I'm talking with.
I don't know why it's so bad. <laughs> I would I was hoping for this one to be good because it's sort of like I mean it's one of the very few Atari 2600 games that have music in the background, but oh my goodness, that sounds awful. <laughs> Okay, this is the PAL version of it, right? Let's just get rid of that, that's awful. Now, I did download the NTSC version for those of you who are in the US or any other NTSC region who wish to know that if this works with NTSC ROMs. So let's see what happens. Okay, it works just as fine. The colors seem fine. I'm not sure if you can play without growling in the freaking background. Okay, so we have speakers. There we go. Connected to external speakers. Impressive! This is my exploration and review on this, and I have to say, all in all, I actually really like this. I mean, the sound is not bad here. Let's give it its due. The sound is actually pretty smooth here, so I don't know why in certain games it's not, you know, and why it's delayed in certain games. Uh, certain games it's fine, like River Raid, it was perfectly fine, the sound. But in Yars Revenge or Pac-Man or a couple of games like this, the sound was not good. So it's hit and miss. Dig Dug doesn't work um, for some reason. I've tried more than one ROM and that didn't work. So even though I have my my beloved PS Vita, I'm still happy that I got this. <laughs> because, you know, the SD card, as I said, sold it to me the most. It's the SD card that sold it. That Otherwise, the 51, I was still, you know, teetering over it, and I like, get it eventually or not. Um, but, yeah, it's cute. That's what I found, that's what I liked about it. It's got a nice charm. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope it was useful for you, and, you know, your decision on whether to buy this or not. Um, I showed you the inside of it as much detail as I can, the, as much detail as I can, the outside of it and everything. And yeah, I enjoyed it myself. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna mess around with it now. I really like it. And the fact that I'm, even though I wish this had that freaking phone box, not this plasticky freaking vacuum form thing. I'm jealous of the 50 ones, the, the people who have the 50 games just because of the box. But I'm glad with the, the console itself. I'm glad I have this one. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I'm glad I have this. I want to mess around with this. I want to add more demos and more games and just, you know, what I do best. And uh, I don't know what the battery life is like this, uh, battery life is like on this, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna, um, it's, it's gonna last quite a bit. And you know, you can get rechargeable triple A's, any loops or something, you know, if anything happens. Um, I will let you know, actually, I probably will do a follow up video uh, on the AV and also I'll let you know on the battery life of this, uh, which I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos because I do plenty of other things, ranging from Amiga to photography to electronics. So much, you know, I do a lot. Just, <laughs> just check out my stuff and please share with your friends. Thanks so much. For now, I will say adios. I would like to say a big thank you to all my patrons for all their support, especially to my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garboot, Cameltech, Stephen Leary, and Chris Sabalensky. Your support makes a huge difference. 
and means a lot.